Sorry, everyone. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. And all panelists, please turn on your videos. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Carl. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of October 5th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumble, and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. You see her? Thank you. Barron. Borelli. Present. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Deutsch. I was muted. I'm sorry. I'm present. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Deutsch. I'm here. Thank you. Diaz. Yes, Andy. Thank you. Drum. <laughs> Eugene. Gibson. Present. Jonai. Present. Gordenchik. I am here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. It says new. I am present. No, you just, it, okay, now it's. I am I'm, I'm present and happy to report that moments ago, the court upheld the validity of the validity of our chokehold law in its entirety. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Lander. I'm here. Levin. Levine. Present. Council Member Lewis. Present. Mizell. Present. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Sorry, present. Thank you. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Uh, 
Presente. Thank you. Rose. Present. Present. Thank you. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am present. Baron. Blessed and present. Thank you. Thank you. Ballone. Present. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Mark E. Erson, the spiritual leader at St. John's Lutheran Church, located at 81 Christopher Street in Manhattan. Good afternoon. As autumn trees begin to blaze with the brilliance and beauty of the creator's genius, we rejoice and take delight. And yet this season reminds us of a, our transient world in which there is a constant journey from life to death to rebirth. And so with both awe and humility, we pray. Creator of the universe, we give thanks for all that you have imagined, made, restored, and renewed. Creating us in your image, you call us to join you in creative and recreative endeavors. Whether art or athletics, policy or products, charity or change, you invite us to join in your work that enlivens your world and enriches the lives of all creatures. And yet in these challenging times, we are bold to join the psalmist and cry out, how long, O Lord? As we pray for healing for those suffering with COVID-19 and for comfort and peace for those mourning the loss of loved ones. Give us patience and strength, courage and insight, so that rather than sinking into despair, we might ignite hope in others. Open our eyes to see those who are in need, those who are hungry, those who are alone, those who are oppressed. Open our hearts to show compassion and mercy. Open our mouths to cry for justice and to speak of peace. Bless our city, grant wisdom and courage to those who govern, comfort all with your shalom. Amen. Thank you so much for that very beautiful prayer. I'd now like to call on Speaker Johnson to spread the invocation onto the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I wanna thank uh, Reverend Mark E. Erson for being here today. And I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Uh, Reverend Mark Erson is the ninth pastor to serve St. John since his founding in 1855. He has been at St. John since 2011. He is both a cradle Lutheran and a native New Yorker, having been born on Staten Island while his father was serving as pastor of Messiah Lutheran Church. While serving as an assistant to the pastor at St. Luke in Devon, Pennsylvania, Pastor Mark earned a master's of art and theater at Villanova University and began combining his interest in theology and theater, writing and producing plays and musicals with the willing and supporting mem supportive members of St. Luke. 
He then spent several years as an actor and a theater teacher before joining St. John's. Pastor Mark is an integral figure in the West Village, leading St. John's with acceptance and optimism, with an emphasis on programming to engage the LGBTQ community. He has worked tirelessly on behalf of homeless LGBTQ New Yorkers, especially LGBTQ youth. And uh, this is not the first time we have had Pastor Mark here, but it is always a pleasure to have someone of his stature and compassion to join us. He is really what makes New York uh, great. His compassion and love that he shows every single day. He is a towering figure in the community and anyone that you talk to would say the same thing, how grateful they are that he serves our West Village neighborhood and community. So I wanna thank you, Pastor Mark, for being here. We're so lucky to have you and we're honored to have you here today. So again, Madam Majority Leader, with that, I ask that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. Now we will have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Adrian Adams. Madam Majority Leader, I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of September 16th, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor? None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you again, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, today is a uh, sad day for the New York City Council. Just about a year ago, we were here and voted to suspend Council Member Andy King for behavior which I said at the time was intolerable and unacceptable. At that time, it was the second determination against Council Member King of violations of the council rules and policies. And we are back here today considering his expulsion. Section 45 of the city charter requires us to judge and sanction our own members. We cannot abdicate this legal duty. However, we used a highly regarded outside firm <clears throat> with Kerry Cohen as our special counsel to both investigate and bring the current as well as prior cases against council member King. This case was brought before our standards and ethics committee whose members have demonstrated over the last three years how rigorous and partial and professional they are in carrying out these charter mandated duties. Last year, we debated between two options. One, the harshest penalties we had ever imposed on a council member, including a 30-day suspension, a $15,000 fine, mandatory training at the council member's expense, and a permanent monitor in his office. And the second, expulsion. The Standards and Ethics Committee, after months of work, had unanimously agreed that suspension, a, susp a, susp a substantial fine, training, and a monitor were the appropriate course of action at that time. The committee's decision a year ago was based in no small part on a reluctance to overturn the will of the voters of the 12th District in the Bronx unless all reasonable alternatives had been exhausted. The committee in recommending the sanctions short of expulsion hoped that a significant punishment with specialized training and a permanent monitor could get Councilmember King to change his ways and correct the toxic environment he had created in his office. I publicly called on Councilmember King to resign at that time, but I believed we had an obligation to do everything we could to attempt to remedy the situation before taking a drastic action of expelling a member of this legislative body. Unfortunately, all reasonable alternatives have been exhausted and drastic action is now our only option. As we debated the appropriate sanction in 2019 and in the aftermath of our imposition of the monitor in Councilmember King's office, something happened which I believe speaks volumes about the council and the trust people have had in this process. Other staffers and former staffers of Councilmember King came forward after that last uh, sanction occurred to our standards and ethics committee staff 
to our special counsel and subsequently to the monitor that was put in his office. These staffers raised both complaints of discrimination and harassment, as well as ethics complaints against Councilmember King that had occurred prior to the imposition of the monitor. The truth is, had these claims been raised and substantiated before our stated meeting last October, the outcome may very well have been different. The vote to expel Councilmember King very well could have happened last year. But the important thing is how heartening and encouraging it is that the courage of the complainants, the witnesses, and our actions at the time made other brave staffers and former staffers feel they could safely come forward. All these staffers and former staffers are really the heroes of this sad case, and we owe them our gratitude. <clears throat> Based on these new allegations, almost immediately after Councilmember King's suspension, our Standards and Ethics Committee began its third investigation of Councilmember King. The results of that investigation are before us today in the report that was sent around, and I have to say they disgust me. I will let Chair Matteo outline the charges which were unanimously substantiated and include discrimination, conversion of council funds, and complete disregard of much of our 2019 resolution imposing corrective actions and sanctions on Councilmember King. But before I turn it over to the chair of our Standards and Ethics Committee, who has worked so hard and to whom we all owe a debt of gratitude, I wanna emphasize two things that really disturbed me that are contained in this report, even among all the disturbing evidence outlined therein. And it almost goes without saying that first, telling a staffer with menstrual bleeding to quote, put a Band-Aid on it, and second, taking $2,000 of city funds our conduct that is disqualifying for public office. But what also appalled me are these two things. After we put a monitor in Councilmember King's office and charged him with doing these awful things, first, he treated employees who were cooperating with the committee and the monitor poorly. And second, he raged and cursed at the monitor for refusing to let him fire yet another employee who had just requested a medical accommodation. I am grateful that the monitor, who has been amazing, has been there and worked tirelessly to protect staff. Nevertheless, this conduct, along with all of his other behavior, provides to me that Councilmember King's behavior is unfixable and that if we do not take the action recommended by the committee, we are likely to be back here again in a few months. By our rules, which Councilmember King has voted repeatedly to approve, it was the Committee on Standards and Ethics that was charged with hearing and weighing the evidence and ensuring that the recommended sanctions were commensurate with the violations. They held a four-day hearing at which Councilmember King appeared with counsel and was afforded every opportunity to make his case and challenge the evidence against him. The committee deliberated for days after that and meticulously reviewed all the evidence, including witness testimony and documents. There is no question as to the amazing caliber and care and diligence they exercised, and I cannot thank them enough. So now I wanna turn it over to the chair of the Standards and Ethics Committee, Chair Matteo, and after Chair Matteo is done, we will provide Councilmember King time to speak as well. I wanna turn it over to you, Chair Matteo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me begin by saying how deeply upsetting it is that we are here debating the expulsion of one of our colleagues. We had hoped that the last hearing and the sanctions imposed in the previous disciplinary matter would have been the last time the committee and the council would have to respond to Councilmember King's unacceptable and impermissible behavior. We hoped the council member would have taken the last chance we afforded him and made changes, that he would have learned from suspension that the monitor's oversight would have resulted in an office free from intimidation and mistreatment of staff, and that the voters of the 12th district could continue to be served by the council member they elected. Unfortunately, this is not what happened, and we are here again, consistent with the duty and authority set forth in section 45 of the New York City Charter, which requires us to punish our members for disorderly behavior and to expel any member after charges and a hearing 
with the concurrence of two thirds of this body. Subsequent to the hearing and issuance of the report on our last matter, we learned of further disturbing conduct that occurred between 2017 and 2019 that we had not known about and that resulted in our needing to bring yet another disciplinary proceeding against Councilmember King. We learned about additional discriminatory and harassing acts he committed against the female staffer prior to the imposition of the monitor. We learned of a corrupt kickback scheme that he engaged in while we investigated him in 2019. And we learned that from the beginning of his return from suspension, he refused to comply with the most basic remediation terms of the resolution. As I indicated last October, I still believe expulsion is reserved for those instances when there is no other viable alternative. The conduct that underlies the substantiated charges, which constitute Councilmember King's third strike before the Standards and Ethics Committee, leaves us with no alternative to expulsion. I have already summarized the charges in my statement following the committee vote, and they are detailed in the committee's report, but I will briefly review them again now. The first charge against the council member of discrimination and harassment was based on conduct that occurred from in or about September 2017 through in or about January 2018, and was substantiated based on testimony and evidence that revealed that he treated a female staffer's medical condition as a joke and told her to put a Band-Aid on it when she informed him that she needed to seek emergency medical treatment for menstrual bleeding. That he forced the staffer to go out unnecessary, indefinite, and unpaid medical leave, which he described as putting her out. And that he refused to return her to work for almost three months, even after she submitted a doctor's letter, that she should return immediately, which eventually resulted in her resigning to pursue other paid employment. This additional discriminatory and harassing conduct should be sufficient basis for expulsion, but there was more. The second and third charges related to conduct that occurred during our last inv investigation from in or about July 2019 through in or about August 2019 concerning conflicts of interest and disorderly conduct. These charges were substantiated based on evidence and testimony that demonstrated that Councilmember King engaged in a corrupt kickback scheme where in exchange for providing a one-time payment of $9,500 to a staffer, he directed the staffer to return 2000 to him to be misappropriated for his own personal financial gain. Finally, the fourth charge against council member was substantiated based on his recent conduct, which violated the terms of the resolution. The testimony and evidence demonstrated that he failed to comply with the most basic terms of the resolution. He has not paid any of the $15,000 fine despite being sent the payment plan. And then a second more favorable payment plan and multiple requests for payment nor has he completed or paid for mandated training. And perhaps most disturbing, he was willfully and obstinately made every effort to circumvent the monitor as well as undermine and verbally abuse her. He attempted to make hiring and firing decisions, which he successfully blocked, attempted to intimidate his staff and treat them adversely when he believed they were cooperating with her, refused to meet with her and ignored her attempts to communicate with him and subject her to profanity, yelling and sexist remarks. In flouting the requirements of the resolution, Councilmember King has made a mockery of the imposed sanctions and there can be no more changes. Councilmember King's conduct has forced us to take this drastic but necessary action of recommending his expulsion. I reiterate that we substantiated the charges and arrived at our recommendation gravely and solemnly after a lengthy four day hearing in which Councilmember King was afforded full due process and after lengthy deliberations where we painstakingly reviewed all the evidence. The committee was unanimous in all charges. With these considerations in mind, I submit to you the committee's recommendation of expulsion with a heavy heart. Neither I nor any of the members of the committee ever wanted to be in this position. As much as we would like to respect the will of those who elected him, we have a duty and obligation under the charter to judge accused members with whom we serve. Unfortunately, we have concluded that Council Member King is unreformable and urge the council to vote in favor of expulsion. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Matteo. I now wanna provide Councilmember King an opportunity to speak during this portion of the meeting. Councilmember King. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and thank you, Madam Chair, um, for the opportunity to share um, a number of things that uh, that are disturbing to me as well as it's having us all placed in this position that we have to have this conversation, let alone vote against one of our own. Um, you know, last week um, was the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, 
um, as people ask for uh, making amendments, amends to and atone for their sins. Um, many of us do that, um, and I am no exception to making amends. Um, but what uh, we are going to discuss right now, what you're going to hear from me, um, is something that lays to the truth. And what we all have to understand is that while we are we are all elected to do a job, and when I came down to 36,000 folks, I made a commitment to serve. My commitment has never wavered, and I've continued to serve. However, I've gone through a number of things since being into the council. And I'm gonna ask as we continue to have this conversation that you hear what I share, uh, feel what I share and understand what I share. I first start uh, with a letter that I received that was sent out from a resident of the 12th district of the Bronx. And it reads as this, as I am a resident of the 12th district of the, in the Bronx, currently represented by council member Andy King. I have been following the report surrounding the accusations against him. I'm very confused about what is going on and why. On October 2019 to November 2019, I believe Mr. King was scrutinized for his actions and behavior. Ultimately, that resulted in a vote amongst his peers to have him suspended for 30 days with no pay and require him to pay a $15,000 fine. Now it appears that Mr. King has made the news for the same accusations that were outlined in 2019, which he has already disciplined for. I do not believe the public is getting all the information surrounding our council member. We voted, we voted him in and we should know exactly why he's being voted out by his peers. The ones who make up the ethics committee, it is very unethical, unfair, completely biased and unjust for an in-house committee of peers to come together and decide against their co-workers if he should be let go or suspended as if they are judge and juror to bring someone's career to an end. How many of the city council members make up the ethics committee? According to my Google search, I see five members make up the ethics committee, Steve Mateo, Margaret Chen, Karen Koskowit, and Steve Levin, fellow Bronxite Vanessa Gibson. I find it alarming and again, unethical for peers to be allowed to vote against their peers when the outcome is severe as expulsion. Even in a classroom setting, this would deem unfair for students to vote to get other students expelled. This is not a minor vote. You're allowing five people to make the recommendations on someone's career, life, ability to provide for their family and above all their character. If for any reason, unbeknownst to the public or press, there is a member of the council who may be envious of our council member, don't like our council member, or have any political motive to have him removed from the council, would it be fair, just or ethical for them to say, on the outcome of these private proceedings. What if another member of the council was facing expulsion for any reason? Could it be possible that they have a buddy sitting on the ethics committee and that friendship could influence votes, go against the motion on the table, expulsion? Of course, this is not a popularity contest. This is the character and life of a public official. If the accusations are serious enough for recommendation of expulsion, then it should be serious enough for a more formal setting, a third or neutral party to address the hearsay surrounding Andy King. This is hearsay. Where is the evidence of Mr. King? This is not okay for his friends or his foes to have a vote on a motion recommended by five members, his peers to lose his job based on what's said by anyone. You punished him in 2019 and now you're going to move for expulsion. How is this an example we're setting for New Yorkers and how we want our families to be treated and judged fairly via justly at the court system? The vote seemed rushed against Andy King back in 2019 to suspend him, and it wasn't. And if it wasn't, then why did the investigation continue to uncover more evidence or hearsay to move to expulsion in 2020? Shouldn't the committee have taken time to get all the information, evidence in 2020 and, and, and hearsay? Excuse me. Shouldn't the committee have taken time to get all information, evidence, and hearsay, and then move forward with a reasonable punishment as if then if as they have done in the past with other members? Sounds like double punishment to me. In fact, this is the first time that an ethics committee has moved to expulsion of one of them as well, that member being convicted of a crime. Sounds unethical, unjust, unfair, and wrong to me. Our councilman may have arguably broken some rules that were put in place for city members, but up to now, he has not broken any laws. Any former member of the council that was expelled was convicted of a crime. I find it to be extremely forced, ex extreme force of punishment to have his peers vote to expel him from the city council. His term is up in December, 2021, just like the majority 
if not all members of the council. Based on that fact, some members may overly care about the outcome of the vote, depending on their next ven venture and public service, while for other members, it may not matter at all how the outcome turns out because they are out, out of there in over a little a year. But for our community, our district, and our council member, it is a major deal, a major decision, and should not be taken lightly. The process to move to expulsion of any member is unethical, unjust, and unfair, and completely biased with the city council. Any motion to be expelled should be coupled with a criminal charge or conviction. The committee on standing ethics in the city of, the of the city council has too much power over any member's faith and public service. That is unethical. What happens when accusations against a particular member of the ethics committee is brought to the city council? How would the internal ethics committee be able to fairly judge and recommend a disciplinary action against the specific ethics committee and council member? For example, how would this ethics committee treat accusations against council member Mateo, the chair of said committee, food for thought? The idea and the role of this makeshift committee seems to be biased and designated to be a fake court with four jurors placed on, placed to decide to demise any bad behavior of his friends or foes. Expulsion is extreme and important for the public, all constituents of New York City. Know about the unofficial internal procedures and the poor implicated system within the city council that is corrupt and unethical. This should be brought to light in an attempt to stop any defamation of character of council member Andy King and other future council members that may be at the mercies of the ethics committee in the city council. The bullying has to stop somewhere, just like cover-ups have to stop somewhere. As a New Yorker and a proud Bronxite, I want any system in place to recommend any kind of disciplinary action to be fair, just, and unethical. I'm asking, urging New Yorkers and the New York City Council to stop the vote on Monday 10-6, 2020 to expel council member Andy King, respectfully submitted, by concerned 12th district resident. Well, I thank the resident for submitting that letter to me and to others. I applaud the committee who, uh, for their work, but I also thank my community who I've served, worked and lived in all my life. I start with my story of coming to become a council member in 2014 when I got to the 2013, 36,000 people voted me into the city council. And I took them down to city council and I've worked tirelessly each and every day to make sure that I do all that I can to make sure our seniors, our children, schools, infrastructures, and be a team member in the city council to do what's best in legislation and budgeting responsibilities for the city of New York. But politics do kick in and the politics kick in and someone doesn't find favor or flavor with you, then you are at the mercy of those politics. So I say to you, my hit started back in 2014 when there was the vote for the speaker of the city council. And at that point in time, Carl Hasty was the county chair and I gave my word and my commitment to stand with the Del Bronx delegation, whoever becomes the speaker I will support. The Bronx delegation was with Dan Garotnik at that time. Um, and then we all end up voting Melissa. After that, troubles, headaches started for me. While I stand true and dedicated to serving, serving, I still didn't get a committee at the start. And then I even lost, not that I get a committee, the way I was treated from time to time, being ignored by the speaker, Melissa. Um, then I became the chair of the BLAC, or I fought tirelessly to stand up for causes for Black, Latinos, and Asians communities. And then, then there was a struggle there as then speaker again, um, tried to organize along with another member me out of being the chair of the caucus. Then I was thrown underneath the bus when that didn't work by a quote that someone was terminated by me uh, because they spewed my sexual advances. That started the whole campaign against me to make my life challenging in the city council. And during that time, I stayed strong and stayed fast to protecting the house and doing the job that the residents of the 12th district elected me to do. I also, came up with legislation, fought legislation each and every day to only get my heart shattered and broken as legislation has been taken, care of, taken away from me and to be called a nigger by a white colleague. I went and reported that in to Melissa and Ramon and nothing was done. Only for that, for that council member to come to me and apologize at the steps that lead up into the chambers. And then later on in the speaker's race, come to my campaign office and apologize for what he said he didn't do, but if he did it, he apologized. 
That's been my reality. Ramon Martinez would call me into his office regularly to say, are you okay? Because he knew what I was going through. Even Margaret Chen, I would complain to her about me, what I was going through being the chair of this caucus, but still showing up every day, showing up to city hall, doing my job, fighting and saying what I had to do for the residents of the 12th district and the Bronx and beyond. That's just the start of my, all of the stuff that I've been trying to manage at city hall. So yeah, in 2017, when I become, when, in, in those years, I become the chair of, of the committee of subcommittee on libraries with Jimmy Van Bramer. We did historical work and getting the most money we could for libraries for the first time ever. But that all went south and sour when I was accused of shaking somebody's hand and then inviting them to my wedding anniversary and telling them to smile. While it was never proven, I was found guilty of shaking someone's hand, inviting them to my wedding anniversary, and someone wants to cons constitute that as sexual harassment. I say that's unfair, but if you consider me a nigga, then I guess it doesn't matter what, what strategies you put together to make my life miserable. So I, my heart is breaking right now because after I went through that, I was sent for a training for sensitivity training. I went through the sensitivity training. I come back out and I continue to do my work in this council. I continue to fight for New Yorkers. I continue to fight for Bronx sites. This has been my reality each and every day, only to come to a place that a staffer, a staffer in 2017 gets suspended by the city council and I have no reason to understand why they were getting suspended because I didn't suspend them. The only to find out that later on, because there was some anger management issues that he was suspended, that staffer was suspended. Uh, so he suspended. And then all of a sudden I get charged again with instructing the investigation, not talking to anybody. And I'm saying, I didn't even do anything wrong. So now in this place and time, I'm being charged for something that somebody else did as the chair, uh, uh, as, the, as the principal of my office, okay, I have to set responsibility, I'll accept responsibility, but don't say that I sexually harass people, don't use terms and words that move people emotionally that are incorrect, because all that does is character assassination, it poisons my colleagues against me, it poisons the public and certain communities against me, for what reason? Is it political or is it fair? So again, here I stand because Last time I was in, do, having this conversation with you all in regards to discrimination and unfair treatment of staff, you know, I went before the, stand, the Standing and Ethics Committee, they hired an outside entity to, to investigate. And that outside investigator, I watched. I watched from the transcript how Cohen made lies, finagled the the, the, the not only the report that she submitted back from the last investigation, but she lied to, to, to Chair Mateo. When they told Mateo that I did not engage in this process, it was a falsehood because my attorneys reached out to Ben Smith, who was then at the council, and they were going back and forth with communications to set me up to have a conversation with them about all those allegations. Well, you know what ended up happening? Twice they reneged on the meeting that they were supposed to meet with me. The first time they said the person who was coming to meet me went on vacation, so they canceled that meeting. This was back in May of 2019. And then on June, June of 2019, they scheduled another meeting with me. And they made me and my attorney wait for two and a half to three hours. My attorney's going back and forth with Ben Smith. Where is this person? Where is this person? They never showed up, never showed up. So they never got my side of what Accused what the accusations were. So I would have to ask the question of, of Helen Rosenthal or Carlina River. I would have to ask you all the question. If someone was to say that you did something, how could they come forth and say that you, you wore a red shirt and you did a blue shirt and you kicked somebody, but no one ever talks to you to say that you actually did this? Well, this is what Cohen did. Cohen put out a whole, whole report together and gave it to the Standards Ethics Committee and said, this is what happened with Councilman King. This is what he did. He was a file, but they never talked to me about any of the allegations. They never had a conversation with me. I spoke to judges outside of this, and they said, there's no way the court, the court of law would ever come to a conclusion without talking to both sides. But the city council standards and ethics was put in a position to vote on a document that was flawed and that was untrue. But more importantly, the city council voted on those voted on um, Cohen's report to the Standards and Ethics Committee. And in turn, there were a number of things if the Standards and Ethics, if, or if 
Cohen would have talked to me, would have cleared things up, and they wouldn't even we wouldn't even be here today because there wouldn't have been a second conversation about me violating ethics. But again, if you look at me as the N word, then it doesn't matter because it's all about hurting me. It's not about finding truths. It's about hurting me. So we end up here today, again, right after I returned back to work. I was suspended for 30 days. So let's talk about the suspension of 30 days. I sat down. I was told by Chuck Davis when I got back that I was responsible for my office. I sat down with him and the monitor they said I was responsible for my office. Only thing I'm not responsible for is for hiring and firing. Nothing I've ever done. But I do want to back up and talk a little bit about how I feel that I'm being mistreated again. I have a, I have a document here. This document is from 2017 after I, there was a complaint and I went through this whole process again with y'all and people said I did this and I did that and I did this. So I'm gonna read what it says. This is a, an email that went to the Office of General Counsel from a staffer, from one of my staff in 2017 after I was revealed that I was the one that was allegedly sexually harassed and did all this ugly stuff. And it reads this. It reads to Ms. Dave, Mr. Davis, C.C. Peg Toro, I want to formally inform my member as well as Ms. Toro of the conversation I had with you, Charles Davis, on Tuesday morning, which I made a, made a complaint against whatever individuals, individual or individuals, if any, chooses to inform members to, of the press that Councilmember King was the subject of a committee of ethics hearings last Friday. This email serves as that purpose. As discussed, I'm concerned that the disclosure to the press of my council member's identity are potentially discriminatory towards the council member, myself, or any other members of the council member staff or family, and as such, want to feel comfortable as a city council employee that employ that appropriate investigative measures are taken to ensure that no employees or the council or members of the council choose to target our office for any reason, either personal as a result of any controversial vote or policy decision, et cetera. I express to you my passion for my work and the need for me to feel I can do my best work every day. And how dismayed I was that the council member was forced to miss two youth services votes early this week as a result of what to my knowledge was a meeting or meetings with the Office of General Counsel and other central staff. I am tasked with supporting the member to represent the people and I felt the actions of the central staff compromised both of our support, compromised both of our professional responsibilities at this moment. And if any staff member or member of the council went to the press, despite the confidential and closed door nature of the committee hearing, this, this too can be potentially seen as actions to make it more difficult for me to do my job in service to the people of the city of New York. If, my, if done maliciously, this is unacceptable behavior. I choose to disclose this information at this time because I did not disclose the meeting with my member at any prior moment. And while it is my understanding I did not need to do so, need to, I do not want anyone to think the member asked me to make this complaint or in any way put me up to it. The member as well as myself as members of a protected class and as such complaint does not imply I actively asserted a Title VII violation has occurred. I feel it appropriate to ask for reasonable investigation, investigative measures to ensure the rights of Council Member King, myself, and any other member of our staff was not violated. Thank you. This was sent January, excuse me, 12, December 21st, 2017. As of this date, there never was any investigation, no follow-up to the complaint that went to the Office of General Counsel. However, the minute that someone says anything about me, my name is dragged through the mud, is dragged through the papers, all kind of adjectives attached to my name, you know, and it's disheartening for my family, my mother, my daughters, my children, my granddaughters, and my community. So I move forward to how we are here today again with a number of allegations. And I ask everyone, there are transcripts that I continue to ask everyone to read the transcripts. Because again, as what Cohen did the first time, the transcripts do not equal what the report, for, the summary of the reports. 
That's all I'm asking people to read the transcripts. And I'll go into the weeds right now because it's unfair to have cross-examination that brings out information. And then in a summary report, those things are not included. So let's touch on the first one that was brought to the light. Let's bring on the $9,500 that, that a staffer was that received. So I say to all of you, we all know that at the end of a budget session, if you have any funding left over, the only thing that we can do with that is give bonuses. So while they present to you that a staffer got $9,500 and I demanded that they give me $2,000, no. But what that, what that report does not tell you is that four other staffers receive large bonuses as well. One received for 9,500, one received for 8,000, one received for 7,000, and one received for 3,000. That was all I was able to do. There was no kickback schemes involved at all. So also in this report, it says that this, this staffer who received the $9,500 had no incentive or reason to do this. He had no reason to come forth and have a conversation with you. Well, I remind you what I said to you before, when there was a staffer that was suspended for anger management, upon his return to keep his job, he, was, he had to sign an agreement, that staffer had to sign an agreement. If there was any other violations or fractions, he would be terminated from his job. There was another infraction. This infraction happened in January. Now, I was not privy in the office when it happened, but he created a hostile work environment. And when I returned to the office after being in the field, I inquired because the staff was in a buzz and I asked that staff what happened. And they, refer they told me what they happened and they created, and they told, he told the staff, that, he, that staff would told the rest of the staff not to let one staffer into the office, creating a hostile work environment. Ironically enough, that information went to the monitor and the monitor then had the responsibility to report it in. Did it get reported in? You would have to ask the monitor, where's that report? You would have to ask the Office of General Counsel, where is that report? But what I do know is after listening to the, to the hearing and listen, reading the transcripts, his conversation with Cohen, that, that staff's conversation with Cohen happened in January, during the time, I guess, reckon after that violation had occurred. So if you wanna find out a motivation, well, there's your motivation right now to come up with a story. And then as it was proved, that the time and the time that the councils, the general counsel, the, the Cohen determined this happened, this happened on this day, this is how the incident went down, only to find out from my own cross examine I was in the Virgin Islands at the time that this, this event was happening. But yet the report doesn't say any of, any of all of that. It just says that I, I attempted to extort a staffer. That's not fair to me and that's not right because it's all about proving, proving something that's not true just to say you want a case as opposed to getting to the truth. Well, let's move to the second thing. Let's talk about the staff that had the, 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 the menstrual condition. Well, I will tell you what happens. I do recall the day vivid. We're at an event. We're setting up for a event. We're outside. We're doing our stuff. So I ask you as members, how many times have you been at an event? Community needs coming to you, asking questions. People are trying to get your card. People want to take a picture with you and people are just around you. I recall, I recall staffer comes up to me and says these words, council member, I'm bleeding. I said, put a Band-Aid on it and I walk away. Exactly, she waves a finger in my, in my hand and in the air and tells me she's bleeding. I only come to find out in a report come February 14th that she says she complains that she pointed to her vagina. Now I'm saying this to you all as a father, who raised a daughter who's go, who had to go through it, as a granddaughter, witness as she has to go through it, as a brother, as a, fa as a, as a son, there's no way in the world if a, if a mother comes to me and a sister comes to me and say, in my ear privately and says, I'm having some women issues, mental issues, that I am insensitive. So it's unfair for them to pay and go back to 2017 and say, this, and say that I did this three years ago. So. I am, I'm blown away again. My heart breaks because as a father, I would never do anything like that to any woman. To someone who respects my mama, my, my grandmothers, my aunts and uncles, there's no way I would do anything like that. But if you consider me and you start figuring out how kind of ways you can spin a story to say how I'm gonna hurt this black man. So let's move forward to the, to the next thing. The next thing that we have is that, 
the monitor says that I impeded her ability to do her job. Well, during cross-examination, it's on the record. That's why I ask everyone, please, you got to read the transcript. You got to read the transcript. One staffer was asked, did Councilman King ever direct you not to talk to the monitor? The answers was no. He even asked the monitor, was she ever asked, it was the council member ever told you couldn't talk to the staff? No. The council member permit you from checking emails? No. I never got in the way of her communicating with my staff, never communicating any way that she wanted to communicate. I never got in the middle of it. Even the transcripts would tell you that I was rarely in the office. So I don't understand how I got in the middle of her communicating and doing her job with the staff and getting what information she wanted to get, she was able to get and she was privy to any information that she wanted to have. Secondly, and you, if those if those of you had the opportunity to read that report, they said that I hired folks without her permission. Well, Chuck Davis told me, if I was going to hire anybody, I would have to talk to the monitor. The two times I considered, I was going to on last base to hire somebody, I said to the monitor, I have somebody I would like to hire for the legislative director. I never hired him. We never got to that point. But prior to that, they kept telling me that I hired people. Well, Camille Francis from HR testified and told everybody that Councilman King never hired anybody. But in the report, it says that I hired somebody. I tried to circumvent and I hired two people. I didn't hire anybody. And even in the transcripts, the monitor said at the end, well, he didn't hire anybody. But they lead you all to believe that I was out there running them up, running a file, acting like I'm this angry black person running around the world, mad at the world, and mad that I had a monitor in my office. The monitor, as we all know, staff do what to do to work in the office, and as council members, we're in when we're in having meetings, and we move around in the district. So it's just unfair to, to, to paint me as this vicious person. And so I go, I, I, I get into the point of talking about the $15,000 that they say that I'm fined for. Well, let's talk about the $15,000. When I sat in front of the general counsel, my attorney and I, we spoke about the resolution and what it means. And I mentioned to Ben Smith at that time, who was still the counsel, I said, something's not right here because you're, you're asking me for $15,000. But when you suspended me for 30 days, you got $16,000 from me. It's double dipping. So actually you're finding me $30,000. I said, well, you already got the money. Why, I'm still, in, why I still got to give another $15,000? He looked at me with no answer. So in the process of that, my attorney at the time, my attorney, Pam Mays, said, okay, let's figure out how to negotiate again, how do we can come up with pay, pay this deal. So in the middle of the negotiations, they charged me with not paying the $15,000. I, I don't understand. If someone's in negotiation, how do you say that they're in violation if, they're, if their lawyers are negotiating with your lawyers? But again, if you don't care about me and you're doing everything to come at me because consider me an end, I don't know. But it breaks my heart because I've done nothing but work. You know, I get up, I work, I read the papers, and there are so many ugly terms and names that are attached to my name. And I say to each and every one of you, if you've been walking the road that I've been walking in this council, I've been discriminated against, I've had legislation stolen against me, I got slander thrown at me, I got reports that, that, don't, that contradict testimony, and then you all are left with saying, how do we vote to create what? History has never been done before. And anybody who's been voted out of, the, expelled out of council, there was a criminal act attached to it. And the last person to actually get expelled was in 1949 when he, he was a communist who tried to take over the country. So that makes sense, but I haven't done anything, anything that warrants this, especially when none of the stuff has been rightfully proven. Because people say things, you gotta prove stuff. You know, so I'm dragging a lot of weight from every two years to keep coming at me. And, you know, some of you have said to me, you know, who did you piss off? You know, you got a big target on your back. You know, these are the things that you've said to me. And even when the vote came in last time, some of you came to me and said, listen, I apologize, but you know, he's vindictive. So I know I'm up against politics, but I'm just asking us as smart, educated, independent thinkers who got elected to the council, Look at the facts. Look at the transcripts. I, I, sent every, I asked everybody to look at a press conference that we did that clearly laid that there's flaws here. So I'm asking you all, if you're looking to vote, if you have not read any of the transcripts, if you haven't read any of the stuff, 
there's no way that you can make a solid informed decision on a report that was given to a prosecutor that, whose only job was hired, was hired to make sure that she wins. Not figuring out how do we find any troops, how do we figure out how do we hurt a council member? You know, cause one day it's me, the next day, you know, the next day it's somebody else. Someone doesn't like your politics and someone decides, you know, we don't like, as I was told by one county, we don't like your swag. And I'm like, why am I being attacked like this? All I wanted to do is serve my residents when I got voted. That's all I was looking to do. I do not want to be a martyr. I just want to continue to serve the residents of the 12th district. My heart breaks that any one of us would ever have to go through what I've gone through, but you've heard my story and it's not an easy story to share as a dad, as a daughter, as a husband, as a mom, and before my dad passed away, you know, that was one of the challenges that I had when it came to bringing back one of the ladies um, who was having the, the, the sister who was having the challenge. What the transcripts do not tell you is that in the time that she was trying to get her job back and then inspired, my dad died. So when my dad died, my focus was going to Colorado, trying to help my mom bury my dad, fly my dad back to New York. I was no good for the month of October, all the way to the middle of November. And then when I found myself getting it back together, I reached out to that staffer and asked if she was okay around the Thanksgiving time. If she needed her, a turkey or anything, she declined. Then I invited her back again a couple of weeks at a holiday event to talk about bringing her back to work. She left the event before she could talk to me to get, to get her job back. Then when I finally get her back, call her back again, I offer her back a job. She said, you know, she's working someone else. But you know what? The report doesn't tell you that, but the transcripts tell you all of this. That's why I'm saying to us, we cannot just blindly go on this report that's favorable based on what Cohen put together, which Cohen's only job is to win. Cohen's only job is to figure out how to win. That's what she did with the last report. Her only job was to figure out how I slant a narrative to hurt a guy who I care nothing about but again, if you consider me other than me being a father and a, uh, and, and, a, and a brother, anything else, then you would do things and write things up. You know, I, you know, some of my neighbors and constituents say, you know what, you know, you won't be the only black man, the first black man that they've always accused of something and then only to find that he didn't do something later on. So I don't want to be in that position right now because I have a family and I don't need my family to go through this, you know, because I haven't done anything wrong. You know, if we're, if we're talking about finding out troops, I ask us to look and search for truth. I ask us to ignore any politics that might be in the room. I ask us to ignore any slander that's been out there because the newspapers have been horrible. And I know many of us watch the news, see the news, this news gets spent, you know, and then when they look at the transcripts and I'm begging everybody to look at the transcripts, the only way we can vote is, you know, logically and smartly is, is to look at the transcripts. I'm asking you all, if, if, you, if you haven't read the transcripts, you only can vote, you can only vote no to this resolution. You can only vote no to this resolution. Council Member King, if I could just interrupt for one moment, I'm receiving uh, messages from members uh, who have to actually leave and wanted to know uh, approximately how long do you believe, I know this is a very difficult testimony, how much additional time do you believe that you'll need for your testimony so that we can have members better judge how to plan out the rest of their day? Um, I, I thank you for that interruption, um, mm -hmm. and I don't even know how to answer that, mm -hmm. because if someone was sitting in my seat and relying on their peers, mm -hmm. how would someone say, um, I got to run away? I know if, if I'm sitting, and if I wasn't sitting in the seat, I give all the time and energy to make sure that my colleague is protected and respected and hear every word that they have to say. So I don't even know how to answer that question. Um, but um, you want to say? I would like, I, then if I would just defer, I defer, I defer my last comment moments to my attorney who's with me right now. A pleasant good afternoon to uh, the excuse, members of the New York City me, Council. Hold on, hold on one second. Th these proceedings, are for members to speak only at a stated meeting of the city council. Uh, your attorney had the ability to speak uh, during the trial and at the committee. It is not appropriate and we have never allowed at a stated meeting of the city council, someone who is not a member of the body to speak. So I have to say, Councilmember King, you can continue to speak 
if you would like to, we gave you unlimited time, but we are no, not allowing no, outside folks to speak uh, at the stated meeting of the city council today. It has never been done and we are not starting that today. That is why we had a trial and that is why we had a committee process. Uh, <clears throat> I, I certainly would never no, want to run me, a foul. No, 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 no. We, we, we are not allowing non-council members to speak today. Uh, you want me to, I, I could just okay. explain to you what I think needs to Sir, be said. Sir, I'm telling you what the rules are. We no, are no, no. not allowing- Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry. I'm not, uh, I'm not running afoul of the rules and most respectfully, sir, yes, what I'm are. doing is I'm, I'm attempting I'm to right tell- now, I am telling you right now, only council members are allowed to speak at stated meetings of the New York City Council. Okay, that is so how it has always been. Okay, so what I will do is I will convey to my client what I think he needs to convey. Sure, this is out of order. Council Member King, would you like to bring your comments, your testimony to a close or else we're going to have to move on uh, with the hearing? Well, if I, Council I, Member I, King does not have any further uh, words for his testimony, we're going to have to move this particular hearing on. We cannot take testimony from any other members. And I, and I, I understand. Members or members of the members? I, I, I thank you. I thank you for that. As you said, this is unprecedented. It hasn't happened again, ha ever happened before. So we're all treading in waters. And since it is unprecedented, I would ask us not to create an unprecedented vote because the history of the city council, no one has been ever expelled other than filing, making a criminal act. I have committed no criminal acts. And the only thing I say to us all is that I've been going through trials and tribulations and standing tall, being called out of my name, getting legislation stolen from me, standing strong, standing firm, Ramon, Ramon Martinez always checking in with me because he know the abusiveness and I was going through the terms and names I was called in the press, all the stuff that I was doing running from and knowing each and every day that I was standing true with my staff. So it's not fair um, what I'm experiencing right now. So I'm saying let's if you let's not make a new if no if no one's ever got expelled for not committing a crime. I ask us not to be that council that does that. I ask us not to be that council that does that. And I ask you all, if you haven't read the transcripts, please read the transcripts. And if that means postponing the vote, do so. If, read it, if you need more time to read those transcripts, I'm asking my request to the body is to be. Uh, thank Laurie, you. Laurie, Laurie, can I just get 30 seconds? Let me just get myself together for a second. 30 seconds. Councilmember King, we have to proceed. So do you have anything else you'd like to finish with before we move on? Okay, and my final words to this, as we're talking about precedents and what doesn't exist. In 2006, there was Council Member Jennings out of Queens that was found guilty of sexual harassment of five staffers. Two was substantiated sexual and had them cleaning his house. His fine from the city council was $5,000 to slap on arrest. What, I, what I'm being accused of is nowhere near that. And I'm asked to be kicked out of the council. I'm asking us to look inside our heart and look at precedents. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't fit, please, please. Thank you. I thank you for your time. Um, and please, if you haven't read the transcript, you can only, I only ask of you to say no to the resolution. Thank you. God bless us all. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, my time is now finished. I, I of course, allowed Council uh, Chair Matteo and Councilmember King to present. So Majority Leader Cumbo, I'm now turning it back to you. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. 
We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak? Yes, Council Member Van Bramer. We will begin with Council Member Van Bramer. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, this meeting should not have been necessary. Andy King should have been expelled from the city council a long time ago. A year ago, the council discussed horrific accusations that were substantiated after a lengthy investigation. I made a motion to expel him. It failed. Today's report contains more sub damaging substantiated claims. But a year ago, we knew about Andy King. We knew that he had already had a case of harassment substantiated against him. We also knew as a result of the second investigation that members of his own staff were detained and prevented from leaving his house until they shared a, a loyalty oath and revealed who had been talking to investigators. We also knew he used council funds inappropriately, forced a staff member to work on personal matters, repeatedly abused and tormented members of his staff, and accepted and tolerated violent behavior in his office. Knowing all of this, the body failed a test of leadership when it was clearly needed. When the staff of the council looked to us to use our power to protect them, instead the body voted to punish and monitor him. Last year, before I made the motion to expel, I asked many people if they believed that Andy King would stop abusing his staff and office if he continued to serve. No one said yes, but he was left in a position to continue to do this. There are no excuses, just an abdication of leadership. Last year, as we gathered in chambers to consider Andy King's actions, Chloe Rivera was seated in the balcony. I saw her sitting there. Chloe has bravely come forward and talked about how she was harassed by Andy King. I believe her. She's given me permission to talk about her case. Chloe began her career as an intern in my office and then worked on my committee for years. I knew that Chloe was in the chambers that day to challenge all of us to do the right thing and take a stand against sexual harassment and violence in the workplace. I would not let Chloe down that day, nor the hundreds of staff members watching us in their cubicles. Today's vote to expel Andy King isn't a victory or triumph of any kind. It's an indictment of our failure to act when we knew what was the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van Bramer. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. We'll move on then to report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Standards and Ethics, Preconsidered Resolution Number 1439, Council Member Andy King. I would now ask that the clerk take a roll call vote on Preconsidered Resolution Number 1439. Constantinidis. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, may be allowed to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts uh, now. You know, I, I take no joy in the vote today. Uh, but I've heard no contrition from Councilmember Kane at all, ever, for any of his conduct. You know, being a council member, as I said last year, is a privilege. It's one that we take seriously, especially at this moment when the city is hurting, when coronavirus has killed so many of our residents, seen so many people lose their jobs. We have not heard anything from Councilmember King that recognizes the severity of what his conduct has meant to his staff and to all of those who have come in contact with him. I have to vote aye on, on this today to stand up for those who need a voice, who have been rendered voiceless by his continued conduct and lack of contrition for that conduct. Thank you. Thank you. Adam. Pass. Ampri Samuel. I can I um have 
permission to just explain my vocals. Permission granted. Time starts now. After having read every single page of the report, I think that at this particular time, I would have to, as a woman, as a former staffer, make sure that the council body does the right thing, even just on behalf of New Yorkers. We've been through this. We've been presented with enough information. So I would have to vote yes in support of the ethics committee recommendation. So with that, I vote yes. Thank you and our prayers go to you and your family at this time, council member Amphrey Samuel. Thank you. Ayala. I vote aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. I vote aye. Brannon. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. You know, we're at a time in history when faith in government has just about cratered. Um, and it's no help when an elected official engages in the kind of conduct that is at issue here. And I believe it is the responsibility of this body to hold up standards of conduct and to take action when a member's conduct falls below those standards. Um, I think the ethics committee tried to do that. They tried to give the council member options to correct his behavior, to own up to his wrongs and to move forward. Uh, but the council member has continued to show zero remorse for his behavior and has completely disregarded the corrective actions ordered by the ethics committee uh, months ago. And in the process, I believe he's made a mockery of the ethics committee and of this body. What's most important to me as a former council staffer is that we take action to protect the staff who help keep the council running. While it may be true that we are moving today to expel a member of the council who was duly elected by his constituents, the treatment of staff is not an issue fit for the ballot box. Uh, the treatment of staff cannot be something that we merely leave up to the voters to decide. To do so would be to accept as a foregone conclusion that some staff will simply be mistreated until the end of a council member's term. And I find that un unacceptable. I think council member King was given more than enough opportunities to avoid the necessity of this vote today. And I believe that unfortunately he squandered all of those opportunities. I take no joy uh, in, in having to vote for this today, but I am uh, voting aye in favor of his expulsion. Thank you. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. I vote aye. Cohen. I have permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I, I just want to say that I do feel terrible uh, having read the report uh, about what the staff went through. I feel terrible that the people of the 12th uh, Council District are being disenfranchised. Um, I really want to thank Chair Matteo and Council Members Chin, Gibson, and Kozlowitz 11. I can't imagine how difficult it was to do this work. Um, uh, I want to say, you know, how, the confidence I have in your recommendations. Uh, and with that, I'm going to vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Councilmember Diaz. I respectfully vote no. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. I'd like to pass for a second. I need a moment. Thank you. Sure. Jonai. I vote aye. Thank you. 
Kodenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Permission to claim my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. I'm sorry I did not vote to expel Councilmember King in October of last year. Regardless of whether we had the votes at the time to expel, I should have done the right thing and voted to do so. We have a duty to believe women and we have a duty to protect our residents and our own employees from sexual harassment and retaliation. The city council failed despite its best efforts. Immediately following our vote, if you followed council member King on social media, there was no indication that he was suspended. When I saw, saw him violating the terms of his suspension, I reported it. I was disappointed that council member King did not take the time provided to consider the impact of his actions on his staff receiving the training and personal counseling to do the work of really understanding the harm he caused and making amends. The retaliation against employees, the reprehensible conduct towards a woman on his staff that violated several federal laws going so far as to suspend her without pay, the games of cat and mouse alleged between council member King and the monitor, kickbacks, and the long list of improper conduct is difficult to read. To the staff members, to our city, please accept my apology. I understand that may not be good enough if you faced unconscionable conduct that occurred after our last vote. Today, I do my best to correct that mistake, past mistakes. It ends now, it stops today. I vote in the affirmative to expel Council Member King. King. Again, I, I vote no to this resolution and I'm just saddened as I hear the roll come down that the words, ask, I'm being asked to be humbled more than humble than I can, I'm being humble as I can. And I have made atonement and I apologize to anybody oh, who got offended, yeah. but the truths are in the transcripts. And I just ask people to make the transcripts and I'm listening to people just ignore that. And there's nothing more that I can say, but I vote no. And I ask all those who are voting after me, no, it's just not fair. It's just not fair what you're ignoring. It's not fair. Thank you. Who? I. Kozlowicz. I read the transcripts and I listened to the witnesses and I vote aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. I've explained my vote in a statement that's posted online on social media. Anyone that would like to see it can read it there. In solidarity with the staffers who found the courage to speak up against harassment, I vote aye. Thank you. Levin. Um, can you come back to me? I'm sorry, I have a child sure. Sure. Levine. Yes, permission to briefly explain my vote, Madam Joy Yes. Time starts now. Thank you. I first want to offer my profound admiration for the survivors and witnesses who have bravely come forward. My gratitude to Steve Matteo as chair and the members of the Ethics Committee for a very, very diligent work on this. My gratitude to the many council staffers who have fought for accountability. Uh, I want to offer my own regret for not having voted to expel Councilmember King a year ago, but it is absolutely clear beyond a doubt, not only that his behavior has been reprehensible, but that he has shown no empathy, no sympathy, and frankly, no contrition for these acts. And so I will be voting aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Yeah. Uh, colleagues, uh, we're, we're here again a year later. And when Councilmember Van Bramer introduced the resolution, the amendment to the resolution, and I seconded it, I was hoping that we would have a fuller conversation okay. about what was happening. We are here again a year later, and I just want to think about these consequences that we have that we take when we don't move further than we
we should. And this is an example of this moment. Uh, Council Member King, I've heard you speak a year ago. I'm hearing you today and I will be voting in support of this resolution uh, to remove you from this, this, this body. I'm thinking about the staffers as a staffer myself uh, for a very long time working under uh, intense conditions and also seeing my staff work and your staff, all of our staff work in intense conditions. Uh, they need more, they need support, they need resources uh, and they have organized uh, in this council to demand that. And I hope that we can shift our focus after this vote today and make sure that that happens. Um, the survivors and their ability to stand up against this injustice is not easy. And so that courage must be lifted and applauded. And if there are more things that are happening in this council or in any, any legislative body or in any sector that survivors continue to come out uh, with that courage because we are here and we are listening. Um, the last thing I wanna say is that this conversation is hard and I was really hard even just to be here today to listen to everything, but it is important. It is critical that we listen uh, even to all sides, but that when justice is gonna be served, that we do that. That is our role. That is what we're here to do. Uh, and whether it's in this resolution or anything that's happening in our communities, whether it's budget or laws or land use, that we bring that that essence of justice. Um, Elections matter, uh, and let's move forward. I vote aye. Miller. I, I pass. Moya. I vote aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Uh, I vote aye, and just today is a good reminder and a good day to say thank you to all the staff at the city council who work extremely hard and uh, do such great work on behalf of the city. So I want to say thank you to everybody, including my wonderful staff, and I vote aye. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. I just want to say uh, that today we set a new standard. And it's extremely important to note that in the past, maybe this type of stuff could have happened and gone uh, unrecognized or uh, undisciplined. Well, that is not the times that we're living in now. Uh, and I'm very happy to see that uh, these, uh, these employees um, finally saw justice. I wish we would have done it a year ago. Um, it didn't happen, but we're here today. So uh, I will be voting aye. Richard. Aye. Aye. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Andy King must be removed from the city council. Even in the wake of the most severe sanctions our body has ever issued, he has continued unconscionable abuses and his staff has continued to be exposed to a hostile and even violent work environment. He has shown that he is unfit to hold elected office or any position of power, and therefore I will be voting aye for expulsion. The council members and staff of the Standards and Ethics Committee have conducted their work with the sincerity, integrity, and commitment it deserves. My trust in the council's ability to enforce the committee's previous recommendations as well as an understanding that the council would work immediately to reform its procedures, led me to vote against King's expulsion last year. However, having spoken with some of council member King's current and former staffers and given the revelations in the committee's most recent report, I now see that we could have and should have acted much earlier. And for that, I sincerely apologize. This ugly chapter in the council's history has demonstrated that the process by which we attempt to protect our workers is broken and it is time to correct this mistake. We must address the failures in our process for reporting and adjudicating misconduct, which enable corruption and abuse to persist. And our failure to act continues to hurt our employees and constituents, and it must end. Fierce advocates like Harassment Free NYCC and Sexual Harassment Working Group have put forward recommendations as to how to reform our policies and procedures. I support that platform and we should all listen to them. We need to immediately begin a process to evaluate and implement real changes, including having a public hearing. 
I can't change how I voted last November, but I can and will vote to expel Council Member King now. And I can and will fight to make the changes necessary for the council to become a better and safer work environment, both because we need to lead by example and because we owe it to the staff who work tirelessly on behalf of all New Yorkers. We cannot fail again. Enough is enough. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. I had so hoped that we would not have to revisit this and that there would have been lessons learned, but um, in light of the fact that uh, they were not, I vote aye. Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you so much. Um, look, I wanna start by thanking the New York City Council staff and the Standards and Ethics Committee members, chaired by Councilmember Matteo, for their tireless work to bring justice for all involved. This is the third time the committee had to meet to review Mr. King's behavior. We owe the committee our gratitude for their thoughtful consideration. As chair of the Committee on Women and Gender Equity, my vote is to expel Andy King for his continued misconduct and continued lack of contrition for his misconduct. We must use this as an opportunity to revisit and deeply analyze the effectiveness of these programs. As a body, we have to act quickly and decisively when it comes to sexual harassment. This council and the mayor came together at the beginning of 2018 in response to the Me Too movement to pass our historic Stop Sexual Harassment in the Workplace Act, which is a package of bills aimed at addressing and preventing sexual harassment in the workplace, private and public sectors. Implementation of several of these bills has been a disappointment. The climate survey was so mediocre that the findings and the next steps were irrelevant. We need to aim higher and to do so immediately to end workplace harassment in New York City. I look forward to working with my colleagues to do so. Thank you. Salamanca. I vote aye. Torres. I vote aye. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I want to thank all the staffers who have bravely shared their experiences over the course of these three investigations, as well as the staffers who cooperated with the investigations at high professional risk. You deserve our gratitude and commendation. For three years since the first investigation, King staffers have reported to a deeply precarious workplace, while our process offered him the opportunity to continue his same patterns of harassment and retaliation. These staffers did what the council asked and required of them. They reported violations of the policy and cooperated with investigations. In return, did we deliver real changes in their working conditions or provide them with real security? This moment in our history is not just defined by a single council member's misdeeds. It will also be defined by our institutional ability to implement our own policies in a meaningful way and to ensure a workplace free from harassment and discrimination. This vote is long overdue but we will miss the moral urgency of the moment if we treat the expulsion of Andy King as the sole corrective measure needed to overcome what is fundamentally an institutional problem. This is not a criticism of my colleagues on the Standards and Ethics Committee who did the best they could within a broken system. In order to finally close the book on this chapter, we need to overhaul the systems and structures which enabled Andy King's abuses to proceed undeterred for so many years. And with that, I vote aye. Ulrich. Uh, I vote aye. Valone. 
Aye. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. I'm Thank you. Enough. So at the beginning of Council Member King's uh, testimony, I think uh, I'll call it today, he referenced uh, one of the cases uh, against him. And in so doing, I believe, grossly mischaracterized the uh, allegations against him by a young staff member of this body. And uh, I cannot, in good conscience, let that stand. Um, I believe that staff member. Uh, I believe her. Uh, I, I know her. And it is uh, so typical and happens all the time when uh, people uh, harass young women and then say, it was just a handshake. It was just an invitation to an event. Um, that does a disservice uh, to the courage of the young woman who came forward. Uh, I also believe it's a lie. And, and it's, it's part of why I made the motion to expel last year. It's why I vote to expel Andy King today uh, because there is no remorse. There is no sense of what is right and what is wrong. And it is an outrage. My entire staff is watching this meeting uh, uh, we are texting one another. They can't believe what they've heard and what they're seeing. And we are not only standing up for uh, the first complainant here, uh, we're standing up for all of them and also for every single person on the staff of the city council. I vote aye. Jaeger. Aye. Councilmember Adams. Explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts. Thank now. you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. You know, I, I passed for a reason. Uh, being number one on this role is not an easy position. Um, this body, uh, since day one, even as coming in as a junior council member, I was, uh, became uh, number one on this role. I wanted to fully hear and understand um, after hearing Council Member King, of course, I, and the committee chair, I wanted to hear as many of my colleagues speak as possible to make sure that I had a full perspective uh, and a total roundedness, uh, shall we say, of the situation. This is not an easy position to be in for any of us. As we say, we don't want to be here today making this decision. Um, like Council Member Amphrey Samuel, I too have read the transcripts as, as was recommended by Council Member King. I wish that I hadn't. Um, the, the, the situations are dire to me. And as a woman, even more serious to me. It is unfortunate and a very dark day in this council that we have to do something that is unprecedented. With that, I vote aye. Council Member Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Chair Armadio, uh, uh, for your leadership and the members on the committee and all the staff who really did a lot of work to bring us to today. Uh, this has been a three-year process that's been emotionally draining, exhausting, and consumed many hours of our time. None of us asked to be in this position nor do we wanna be here today making this decision. I am upset, I'm hurt, but most of all, I'm disappointed. I'm saddened for the staff and all the witnesses who came forward uh, courageous and bravely and boldly to share their pain. I'm saddened at the environment of discrimination and harassment in which they were forced to work, which is unacceptable. The bravery to come forward knowing that you could be terminated or retaliated against shows strength. I've heard their stories and I believe them. Unfortunately, our colleague's consistent pattern of a harmful work environment that he created 
and allow to happen in his own office is unacceptable. We all, colleagues, have a responsibility to treat our constituents and staffers with dignity and respect. And when we lose sight of that, it's a dangerous thing. I apologize to all the staff and all the witnesses who came forward for what you endured. I pray for your healing and your strength as you all attempt to move forward in your careers and put this ordeal behind you. I pray for our colleague and his own family. There is a real problem facing the truth and accepting responsibility for his own actions and the role that he played in all of this. He is the victim and everyone else is wrong, is not acceptable. We did not as a committee come to this position lightly at all. This has been three years of a very painful process. And I truly hope as many have said that we find a learning lesson in all of this and we operate better as elected officials, as principals, and we make sure that we continue to put policies in place that really um, create a, a, an environment that is free of harassment and discrimination. Um, thank you colleagues. And, and with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Council member 11. My apologies, Council Member. I didn't hear you. Permission to explain my vote? Time starts now. Sorry, per permission uh, granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, so I want to uh, first associate my, my comments with the comments of Council Member Gibson, uh, my colleague on the committee, um, and um, uh, express my thanks and admiration to the staff members that came forward um, uh, with um, these latest um, allegations. Um, uh, just a, a, a couple of things that I wanted to say about this process. Um, and and um, kind of in response to Council Member, Member King um, um, highlighting that, that this is an extraordinary measure, um, that this has never happened, at least in the last um, 80 or 90 years or so in the New York City Council. Um, uh, uh, that being said, um, as Council Member Brannon said, um, we cannot, um, the vote, the, the will of the voters is, is, is extremely important and almost sacrosanct, but um, we cannot uh, allow that to be a, uh, a blank check uh, for staff to be mistreated. And um, the testimony of the staff member who had been discriminated against um, uh, because of her medical condition, um, I went back and read the transcript uh, after the trial, um, was extremely compelling. And um, uh, even more uh, disturbing to me than the comments of Council Member King um, were the fact that he um, went to great lengths to require her to go out on unpaid leave and then essentially ghosted her and would not return her calls, um, set up an expectation that she would return to work potentially within two weeks and three and a half months went by um, without her being offered her job back, um, nor any indication that she would or wouldn't be able to return to work and therefore uh, she lost out on those wages. And so um, if I may, just, uh, uh, just a couple of concluding remarks. Um, and uh, and so um, that was extremely disturbing. And then um, in addition to the other, the other charge, um, both of which, by the way, as once for the record, um, occurred prior to us making any of the last year, our, our um, uh, sanctions last year um, were subsequent to the actions that we were hearing about um, in these charges. Um, and um, and with regard to the two thousand um, dollars paid out, the documentary evidence was compelling enough to meet a preponderance of evidence for myself and I think the members of the committee. So just to be clear, our standard was basically fifty one percent. We believe the evidence as presented in the allegations, and that standard was met, um, and and therefore. Um, the appropriate sanctions of expulsion, I think, were were due. And so I want to thank, again, um, the chair, 
um, and the members of the committee and the entire staff that worked on this, as well as Councilmember King's staff who have had to endure um, a significant amount of hardship. Um, and, and lastly, I wanna also uh, agree with Councilmember Rivera that um, we should be working with the sexual harassment working group um, and uh, engaging with them further um, on, on how we create a better overall workplace in the New York City Council um, so that we can prevent um, things like this from happening again. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Council Member Miller. Aye. Matteo. Yes. Combo. Majority Leader, are you there? Majority Leader Combo? I'm here, I apologize. I am here, I apologize. I had a technical difficulty. It's time to vote, your vote. Um, I vote aye. Um, this is, been a very sad yeah. hearing for me, um, feeling it very emotionally. I would just say to Council Member King or Andy, as I consider you a colleague and a friend, um, there's no doubt about your brilliance and the work that you've done on behalf of your community, particularly young people, particularly communities of color um, on behalf of the Bronx and the city of New York. <sighs> I know that part of what was recommended were trainings and that sort of thing, but I believe that it's, it's deeper than just a training session. My hope for you, because I do believe that there was a word used in terms of unfixable, I feel that there's much more for you still to do um, in this city and in this world, but I do believe that um, some level of professional help or support um, professional life coaching because it just seems that you're just not very aware or self-aware. Anytime behavior and conduct results in a hearing of this magnitude three times, there's something that deeply has to be addressed. And I hope that you're able to address that. And I hope that you know that there is life after the council and I hope that you're able to move forward but to move forward in a way where you do seek the level of support and help to create the infrastructure so that your understanding about your, how your behavior is impacting people. Um, and that's critical. So that is my hope for you. I, I feel you owe it to your community for the district that you represent uh, to demonstrate that you have a challenge and you have an issue, but you're addressing it. So unfortunately, um, I vote aye, and I do hope and support that you do get the support and the counsel that you need, not just a training, not just a 30-hour training, but real deep, long-term um, help and support. And no member in this council is perfect. No member in this council can say that they've never made a mistake, but it's all about how we go about addressing it. And so I'll conclude with that. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. What aye. The vote on today's general order calendar is 48 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Give me one moment. Madam Majority Leader, it's the introduction and reading of bills. I'm, I'm aware. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into the discussion of reading of bill. Uh, oh, hold on, Madam Majority Leader. Yeah. Is, is the motion adopted? Is it's the resolution been, adopted? Just, can't say that, you know, that people just. Council Member Miller, you're um, not on mute.
Madam Majority Leader, you have to declare if the resolution has been adopted or not. The resolution has been adopted at this time. There are no bills uh, that are being introduced today. We will now move at this time into the discussion of general orders. We'll recognize council members who wish to, excuse me, general discussion. Mr. Parliamentary Leader, there, there, there are no members who wish to speak. Okay. We will now move into report of special committees. No, no, uh, Lori, we're, we're at the end. It's, it's uh, you call on me and I close today's stated meeting. I apologize, my computer has shut down. Um, I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting if there are no members who are wishing to speak on general discussion. The stated meeting of October 5th, 2020 is hereby adjourned.